the more we can think about why we value what we value and think about it consciously and talk about it and write about it, the more unified our lives become, the more seamless our lives become, and the more peaceful, internally peaceful our lives become as the, the tension between the different parts of ourselves, between our, our beliefs and our behavior, between our minds and our hearts gets smaller. As that gap gets smaller and things come together, life just that, you know, it, it, there's something very beautiful that happens when, when we can make that happen. And our well-being and fulfillment increase drastically. You know, why am I addressing this question of, you know, are our values, our behavioral values, the same as our, our, our you know, academic or intellectual values? Are our values, our real values, really what we think they are? The reason I'm asking that question now is because you know, this week, today, Tuesday, is the 12th of Tammuz. The 12th day of the month of Tammuz. And on this day, the previous Chabad Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson, was freed from prison. And you know he was in prison. He was given you know a, capital, a sentence of capital punishment. And nine days early on the 3rd of Tammuz, they commuted the capital punishment and said that he was going to have a lifetime, you know, exile and labor camp, etc. And then on the 12th of Tammuz, on this day, he, they, you know, they completely, you know, scratched the whole sentence and said he, he was free to go. And the reason the Friedrich Rebbe, the reason the previous Rebbe landed in prison was because his values were exactly what he th thought they were. The values of his heart were exactly the same as the values of his mind. And his behavior was completely aligned with his values because his heart was completely aligned with his mind. And his feelings were aligned with his values and beliefs. And as a result of that, his behavior was aligned with his values and beliefs. And what that meant was that his behavior and the way he lived his life reflected those values and beliefs and reflected them to a degree that was far beyond what Judaism and what Torah expected of him. You know, he risked his life for things that the Torah does not expect or even want us to risk our lives for. There are some times when, you know, what the Torah says is, you don't need to risk your life for that. It's fine. B better just, you know, do what you need to do. Stay safe and, you know... Live, live to fight another day. But to, but to the previous Rebbe, that, that wasn't even a question. He didn't want to do something to live to fight another day if it was against what he knew his values really were, if it was against his beliefs. Because his heart valued the same things that his mind did. He felt the same thing that he believed. So when he believed something and when he valued it, it was just natural for him to act on that. And if that meant that he was going to be in trouble for doing what he knew to be correct and true, for doing what he knew to be valuable, then that was just part of the course for him. That was so be it. And so because his, his heart was so aligned with his mind and his feelings were so aligned with his values, he landed up in prison in a Soviet prison because you know the the the, the Soviet regime was antithetic was was you know virulently opposed to his values and to what he knew to be true and so his behavior his behavior landed him in prison and got him a sentence of capital punishment god forbid to him this was reality his beliefs and values were reality and it wasn't a question about whether or not he was going to behave that way his values were the truth of Torah. We're following the guidelines and, and directives of Torah, the instructions and commandments, bringing divinity into the world through mitzvahs, through Torah, through living a life of Torah Judaism. And that was what he was going to do, no questions asked, no matter what. He didn't have to force himself. It was just who he was, it was what he believed, what he knew, and what he felt. So it was what he did. If you haven't yet, click on the subscribe button, then click on the notification bell to see future videos. And please again, share the link wherever you share things on social media, Facebook, wherever it is, WhatsApp groups, 
WhatsApp status to help this message reach more people. This has been the Bites of Judaism podcast. This podcast has been made possible by Mr. and Mrs. Dobbin and Marquis Smetana. If you found it valuable, please leave a five-star rating and a review. It really does help it reach more people. And tell your friends about it. If you haven't yet, you can subscribe on all the major podcast platforms at rabbiglick.link slash podcast. To dedicate a future episode of the podcast, send an email to podcast at rabbiglick.com. See you next time.